Imagine this, a patient in his mid-50s, although healthy and fit, has collapsed with a seizure. The doctors run a battery of tests on him, and they reveal the worst possible case scenario. He has brain cancer, and not just any brain cancer, but one of the worst types. His road ahead looks bleak. Even with a punishing regimen of chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, the outcomes for this kind of cancer are really poor. Most patients do not live for more than a year. While most patients receiving this kind of information would be overawed by the technical terms used, the chemicals described, and the medical phrases, this is not the case for this patient. For this patient is Professor Richard Scolia, a renowned cancer doctor who has dedicated his life to finding new treatments for cancer. He's about to become patient zero in a new trial run by his own colleagues, developing a new kind of drug. This drug will be tailored just for him, a drug as unique as his own fingerprint. Here's how the technology works. Cancer is a genetic disease. It is caused by mutations or changes that happen in DNA within our cells. These changes cause cells to act differently and grow out of control and form tumors. That profile of changes that happen in the DNA of cells is unique to each individual tumor. So even though two patients might have what is broadly the same kind of cancer, for example, breast cancer or liver cancer, each cancer will actually be unique. Scientists can take a sample of the tumor, like the one that is growing in Professor Scolia's brain, and profile that all those DNA changes that occur within that cancer. They can then design a vaccine which will enable your immune system to better recognize the differences between those cancer cells and healthy cells present in your body. Once this sequence is packaged into a vaccine and administered to a patient, it teaches your immune system how to better find and eradicate those cancer cells in the same way that a sniffer dog might be trained to uncover explosives. This approach stands in stark contrast to traditional methods of treating cancer. Treatments like chemotherapy and radiation, while they have been very effective um, in some cases, also come with severe side effects, which will be familiar to anyone who has had experience with cancer or their community, such as hair loss, nausea, pain, and weakened immune systems. This kind of technology is more like a precision missile that seeks out only the cancer cells while leaving those healthy cells untouched. It acts by strengthening the normal natural defenses that you have to prevent cancer in the first place. This technology might sound like science fiction, but it's rapidly becoming a reality. Besides Professor Scolia's trial, many larger trials are currently underway. Many, but not all of these trials, use mRNA technology, the same technology behind the groundbreaking COVID-19 vaccines. Here, they are trying to address a completely different problem to that, that that they did in the pandemic. In the pandemic, the issue was vaccinating the entire world's population, whereas in this case, you want to manufacture a drug just for a single person. But it takes advantage of the same fact that mRNA vaccines can be really rapidly designed and manufactured. So going from that patient's tumor's DNA sequence to a vaccine personalized for a single person, can take as little as six weeks. These trials, which are currently ongoing in diseases like skin cancer, lung cancer, and pancreatic cancer, are already showing extremely promising results in early stage trials. In some of these trials, they're beating the best state-of-the-art current treatments and cutting the risk of death or occurrence from these deadly cancers by up to half. As for Professor Scolia himself, 
he's still alive one year after receiving this personalized vaccine along with surgery and radiation. He's already beating the average life expectancy for a patient with this kind of cancer. The oncologist treating uh, Dr. Scolia and his longtime colleague, Professor Georgina Long, said that this could be a penicillin-like moment for cancer therapy, where rather than being an immediate death sentence, cancer becomes a chronic illness that can be managed. In uh, 2013, both Professor Scolia and Professor Long were awarded Australians of the Year. Of course, many challenges to adopting this technology still exist. These trials are still ongoing and haven't been deployed at large scale yet. We're still trying to work out things like which patients will respond best to this kind of treatment and whether all kinds of cancer will respond equally. But the hope is that this kind of treatment could be a new weapon in doctors' arsenals to beat cancer. Our hope is that this kind of technology moves us closer and closer to a point at which these one-size-fits-all treatments like chemotherapy that don't take into a account the uh, individual characteristics of an individual's cancer will be a thing of the past and we can move to a, a world in which each treatment is as unique as we are as individuals. Thank you.